Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. And now is the news paper review segment and we'll be taking a look at the front pages of the National Daily. As usual, we'll start with the Daily Trust newspaper here. The major story is talking about something that is really, truly affecting um, our NARA, which uh, is the federal government cracking down on illegal crypto traders as the SEC rolls out new regulations uh, to safeguard um, the value of the NARA. You'll find that story on page four, where it says um, the Securities and Exchange Commission um, have vowed to act decisively to uphold the integrity of the capital market and protect the interest of all investors. Um, it's saying that there's a lot of illegal trading activities happening in the country. Uh, and also this is causing um, speculations in digital marketing space, which is putting serious pressure on the Nigerian Nara. We saw how for the past two, uh, weeks, um, how the Nara was at least regaining its value and it started affecting almost everything in the country. Nigerians were becoming a bit happy. But then, you know, the, the, the illegal crypto traders are one of the aspects, you know, influencing um, the devaluation of the Nara. And it seems the federal government, through the CBN and other financial um, bodies, are fighting um, in order to make sure that um, the value of the Nara is at least raising to an extent that Nigerians will be really proud of. So if you want the details of this story, of course, you grab um, the Daily Trust newspaper on page four to see what is happening there. Now below um, the major story, it's a pictorial of um, Palestinians celebrate in the street in Deir el Bala in the central Gaza Strip after Hamas announced it has accepted a truce proposal on May 6, 2024, amid the ongoing conflict with Israel. And it says Hamas accepts Egypt, Qatari, Gaza truce proposal. You'll find that story on page three. I mean, nobody wants war because it never ends um, in a good way. It doesn't even favor even the country that thinks they are winning because war brings a lot of bloodshed, lost of lives, infrastructure, peace. I mean, nobody would say that a war, uh, in war you're winning because there is never a winner. Uh, we want to see an end to this um, war in the world. But then you find the details of this truth um, in page three. Only qualified teachers will teach by no poor pills. That's according to Zulum. You'll find a story on page 26. Now, there's been um, controversy surrounding Bruno State and the payment of um, teacher's salary, where some teachers have come out to say they have been paid just 6,000 naira or 8,000 naira monthly. And um, considering the fact that the image of Zulum is, uh, you know, one of the best governor, hearing that news um, rattled Nigerians a bit. Uh, but then he's coming out to defend himself on that aspect, which we will all definitely agree with, is the fact that qualified teachers should do the teaching. So if at all um, they're, they, they're qualified teachers, then they should be paid well. And if their teachers are not qualified, then they should stop teaching because we cannot jeopardize, um, you know, the, the, the knowledge of the future leaders of the country. Villagers flee as bandits terrorize 10 communities in Kaduna. Uh, you find this over on page 28. This is where the whole uh, back and forth is coming between the media uh, of what is happening and um, all the people of Nigeria and um, the security agencies where um, federal government keeps saying we are making efforts and there is progress. But then the people in these communities um, not really feeling that. They, they, it, ten communities, um, you know, uh, terrorized by bandits, and then these people are displaced, leaving their own communities to God knows where. And it seems it's not really adding up between, you know, um, what the government is saying and what the Nigerian people, especially people living in rural communities, are saying. Uh, you'll find the story on page 26 of what is happening in Kaduna State. No plan to establish foreign military base in Nigeria. That's according to the federal government. The details of that is on page three. Below the headmaster of the Daily Trust, we would have 
fared better if Yeradua had finished his tenure. That's according to the former head of state, um, Yakubu Gawon. Um, based on, of course, uh, the remembrance of um, the former president, late former president, um, Omar Musa Yeradua, um, you find the details on page 11. I was offered one million naira to sell my kidney. That's according to a 16-year-old boy. I cannot believe we are still hearing stories like this. You find that on page 10. I mean, stories like uh, women also selling their eggs um, and being paid a peanut. In this economy, with the devaluation of the naira, one million naira would not get you anything because everything in the market is cost. I mean, it cannot buy you a house, it cannot buy you a car, which is a liability. It cannot buy you, it, it can't really do anything for you. So why would you even sell a kidney that, you know, it, it's priceless. Kidney is priceless, let's be honest. Uh, you'll find that story on page 10. Shatima aborts U.S. trip over faulty aircraft. Well, thank God for safety there. you find that story on page 3. Now this uh, the stories that you'd find on the Daily Trust uh, newspaper this morning. So let's move on to other newspaper that you'd find. Um, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. The major story is saying dollar speculation, the federal government to ban Nara from crypto trading platforms seems to be the major story on, you know, a lot of um, newspapers here. Uh, sex set to unveil fresh rules banning Nara from crypto exchanges the dg meets operators direct traders to name and shame racketeers now you're being given you know reason to blow the whistle on the people that are economic saboteurs uh, below there is a you know horrific really um graphic um pictures of um uh, woman shot and scores injured as a police tear gas delta protesters i mean there's a pic pic picture of uh, the protesters and uh, the injured people um, in the hospital you'll find the details of that on the punch newspaper efcc grills six senior nscdc officers over six billion naira fraud the fcc seemed to be at the trail of um, um at least fighting corruption um you know under the now chairman olukoye de um, really attacking um, corruption and at this point this is what the country really needs people need to be accountable if we want nigeria to um, you know show its full potential when it comes to succeeding because it is a great nation i mean we've made a remarkable impression on you know the outside world all we need to do is prove it not to just be by you know we just say it without actually showing what we've got um, evacuation, Lagos tax force threatened to kill us in Oshun Forest, victims alleged. Um, you find um, that story on page 4 and 5 seem to be a bit of um, drama between the Lagos um, government and uh, the, people of, of, um, or the people of Oshun uh, state. Uh, beside that, Nigerians reject electricity tariff cut to demand total reversal. You find that on page two. At the top of the page, France rules out sitting military base in Nigeria. The federal government orders registration of 1.9 million POS operators. And Shatima shelves U.S. trip as presidential digit develops fault mid-air. Now, these are the stories that you would find on um, the Punch newspaper this morning. And, of course, because of time, uh, we cannot go through a lot of newspapers, so you can definitely uh, catch up on uh, the major stories today on different newspapers um, in the country. And with that, of course, we have come to the end of uh, the program Daybreak on Trust Television. Uh, do not forget to follow us via our social media platform and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Do have a lovely day.